So, you want to learn After Effects. Maybe you've lied on a job application, you've gotten the job, and you're watching this on your phone in the bathroom on your first day. In that case, here's everything you need to know about After Effects in 10 minutes. Here is what After Effects looks like. If it looks like this, your boss isn't paying you enough. Here on the left, we've got our project panel. Here we can drag and drop all of our assets, our images, our videos, and anything that we'll be using. If you want someone to think you're a pro, keep this organized and use folders. Let's click on this button down here to create a new composition. If you're not sure what settings go in here, ask whoever told you to make the video what the delivery specs are. If no one cares, use these settings. 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second. Make sure to name it though. Let's call this intro one. And we can change all of these later. And now you can see that composition is added to our project panel and is open in our composition window. It looks black because there's nothing in there yet. So let's drag in some of our footage. Perfect. And that appears down here in our timeline for this composition. The timeline works similar to the layer panel that you might use in Photoshop. And we can add more assets like our logo to our composition. And now both our logo and our footage appear down here. This logo is way too big. So let's select this dot in one of the corners, hold shift and drag that towards the center to scale it down. There. If a layer is above another in the timeline, they're visible on top in the actual video. So if we move our logo below our footage, it becomes hidden underneath it. Let's put that back. And unlike Photoshop and other layer-based software, we have a duration. If you've used video editing software before, you might be familiar with how a timeline works. In After Effects, we can press spacebar and it will play our video. Now, depending on how much stuff is in our composition, this might not play back in real time. And you can drop the resolution down here if you're struggling and you want some smoother playback. Let's put this to auto. Now let's add some animation to our logo. We want it to do a simple animation, fading on and moving upwards. Let's start with the movement. If we click on this arrow over here, and then click on the arrow next to transform, we reveal some properties of this layer. And we're gonna change these over time to create our animation. If we want to adjust the position of our logo, we can do that by clicking and dragging these numbers, inputting our own values, or simply clicking and dragging in our composition window. As a professional animator and motion designer, I've spent maybe 80% of my career adjusting these transform properties. These are the backbone to almost all animation in After Effects. Now we can move our logo around, but that doesn't move it when we play our animation. We need to tell After Effects where our logo needs to be at what time. And we do that with keyframes. At the start of our timeline, let's move our logo towards the bottom of our scene. And we're gonna set a keyframe by clicking this stopwatch next to the value that we want to change. All properties that you can change over time will have this stopwatch next to them. Now let's move forward two seconds in our timeline and drag our logo upwards. And look at that, After Effects has created another keyframe at that point, wonderful. Keyframes are like markers. They tell After Effects at this point in the timeline, the position of this layer will be here. And at the start, it's going to be here. And After Effects figures out where it needs to be in between those values. So when we play it back, we have an animation. It's simple, but it's definitely animated and no one can take that away from you. If we want this movement to be a bit faster, we can click and drag this keyframe forward. So now it's covering the same distance in less time. It goes faster. If we want it slower, we can drag it further away. Let's move that keyframe to one second. Now our logo's motion comes to a pretty harsh stop when it reaches the top here. And that doesn't look very natural. In the real world, objects accelerate and decelerate when they start and stop moving. And that's really easy to add in After Effects. We can select these keyframes and press F9 on our keyboard, which is the shortcut for Easy Ease. You can also find that by going up to Animation, Keyframe Assistant and Easy Ease here, if it's difficult for you to press F9 on your keyboard. And now the symbol for our keyframes has changed. They have this hourglass shape now, which lets us know that easing has been applied to them. So now when we play it back, there's some acceleration and deceleration in the movement, and it just feels a little more natural, easing into its final position. And it was easy, easy ease. You'll be using that a lot in After Effects. Here's what easy ease keyframes look like compared to the linear ones that we started with. Both animations last two seconds, but the one with easing varies its speed and feels more natural. Now let's fade on our logo by keyframing its opacity at 100%. Moving our playhead to the start of our timeline, let's drag that down to zero, and now it will fade on. Let's select those and add easing easing with F9. There, wonderful. If you want to adjust how much these properties are easing, you can select them and click this button here to open up the graph editor. And here we can see an easing curve and you can mess around with these to create more or less easing to your animation. It's a really powerful technique, but maybe not for your first day. Let's click this again to go back to our timeline view. And when our timeline gets a bit too crowded, we've got all this info that we don't need about our scale and rotation. What we can do is press U on our keyboard 
and that will hide every property that isn't keyframed. Very useful. And you can hide these again by pressing U and keep pressing U to cycle them on and off. You can also open up the transform properties with keyboard shortcuts too. When the layer is selected, clicking S brings up the scale property, R brings up its rotation, P its position, and T its opacity. Our animation is looking wonderfully competent, but like all good motion graphics, we need some text to tell whoever's watching our video either what to think or what to buy. So let's select the text tool from up here in our toolbar. We've also got some other tools to draw shapes. We can draw ellipses, rectangles, and we even have a hand tool so we can move our composition window around if we need to. And with the text tool selected, we can simply click and start typing. I'm gonna select the arrow tool and then move that towards the middle. And we can see that that creates a new text layer down in our timeline as well. Now we don't want this text to fade in gently like our logo. We want this to have impact. So we can select the front of our layer and drag that so it starts a bit after this animation. So we have our logo gently fading on and then bam, hit them with the text. Now over here on the right, we have a bunch of panels that we can open and close simply by clicking on them. Let's open up the character panel and here we can change our text. Let's make it bold and a bit larger. And to make sure it's actually 100% in the middle, we can click on our align panel, make sure it says align to composition and click align horizontally. There, now it's dead center. We also have effects and presets over here on the right. This is where we can apply effects to our layers. And there are a lot to look through here, so this search bar comes in very handy. Let's select our footage layer in our timeline and then search for hue and saturation. And we can add that effect to our layer by double clicking. You'll notice that that opens up our effects control panel over here on the left. We can always navigate back to our project panel by clicking it up here and you can swap between them like this. Here we can make changes to our effect. We can drag the hue to change the color values of our layer, but what we want to do in this situation is drag down the saturation to make it black and white. Let's also decrease the lightness as well to make this white text just a bit more readable. There. Now, we might need to use this logo and text animation on top of some different footage. To do that really easily, we can pre-compose it. So let's select both our logo and our text layer, go up to layer and select pre-compose. And let's call that logo and type and click OK. Now you'll see in our timeline that those two layers have become one composition. And you'll see that composition is now added into our project panel as well. Logo and type, which is what we've just created. We can double click on that and it will open up and we can see that that just contains our logo animation and our type. Let's go over and create a new comp quickly in our project window. And let's call this intro two. Let's drag in some other footage that we have and then drag in our logo and type on top of that. And you can see really quickly that we've got the same animation over some different footage, intro one and intro two, which both contain our logo and type comp. And we can go into our logo and type comp and make some changes to that text. And now if we go back and view either of those comps with the footage, you can see that our text is changed in both of them. That's a great way to repeat animations across multiple compositions and videos. And we can also make adjustments to this pre-comps transform properties. Let's open up its scale with S and let's drag this one down a bit smaller. So now intro one has this logo and type, but it's much smaller than it appears in logo two, which is still the same size. Now we're happy with our amazing animations. Let's render it out. So with the composition open that we want to render, we can click up in composition and add to render queue. And now our timeline is changed to our render queue. We can leave render settings set to best settings because I mean, they're the best settings. Output module, we do want to change though. So let's click on lossless, change the format from AVI to QuickTime and change the format option to Apple ProRes 42HQ and click OK. That will give us a high quality render, but the file size won't be too unbelievably large like a lossless uncompressed video file would be. And we've got options here to resize it as well, but there's no need to do that for this render. Let's click OK. Now let's click on output two and choose where we want to save it. Let's click here and then we hit render. This might take a moment and when this bar fills up, we're done. That render file is very high quality. So that 10 second animation is 200 megabytes. If you do want a smaller file size and don't mind a bit more compression, you can open up Adobe Media Encoder and then simply drag that file into the queue and the default H.264 setting will be a great setting for almost any use on the web. That's what I use all the time. And then we can click the play button to start encoding that. That'll happen really fast. And now we've got a 12 megabyte version of that animation, much better. You can also add a composition to Adobe Media Encoder directly in After Effects by going up to Composition, Add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue if you don't need to deliver an extremely high quality render. After Effects can be a really intimidating piece of software to start for the first time. And I hope I've made that a bit less intimidating for you. There's so much more to explore, but these are the essentials and should serve you well on your first day. Good luck. To discover the best ways to learn motion design, I've created a short playlist of videos that I think you'll enjoy if you've made it this far. 
Please like the video and consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos every week. I'll see you in the next video.